What's up, guys? Sir Sneaker here, and welcome to Soul Talk Episode 5. Uh, today, we do not have friend relations. He's uh, having fun with his friends in Vegas, but we do have One Veracity and PB, the Nike SBOG. Guys, you want to introduce yourselves? Okay. What's up, guys? It's One Veracity here. Um, glad to be back as you know the, uh, one of the permanent hosts, as always, and uh, can't wait to get the show started. What's up? Uh, it's PB, and uh, we also have Nick again. Yep. All right. So the first topic we're going to talk about today is uh, fakes. Fake sneakers, how they affect uh, our community, do they affect our community, and uh, our personal opinions on them. I, I guess I'll start. If you follow my channel, you know sort of my general opinion on fakes is that uh, I don't really care as long as it doesn't affect me. And the only way I think fakes affect me is uh, if I'm trying to buy a real pair of shoes and I accidentally buy a pair of fakes. Exactly now, I've been in this thinking. long enough, it doesn't really happen as much anymore, but in terms of, like, fake stores that are open about the fact that they sell fakes, I'm totally fine with that, you know? Uh, in an ideal world, I'd like the, uh, the designers, you know, to get paid for the products they make, but I feel like, you know, most people buy fake shoes or fake versions of shoes that's sold out anyway, so the designers are still getting paid, so I don't think it really affects them. And as long as, you know, they're not tricking us into buying fakes, I think fakes are fine. See, um, I'm going to go ahead and com – well, I disagree with that. Um, and I've always, I've always thought this way. Like that's like the much more like sort of mature way that you think about it. But the way I think about fakes is that I hate them and I don't respect people who n knowingly buy them in the store. Like if you get something that's, that you don't know is fake, like you're not um, educated. Like when I bought my first pair of vapes, I was like – Oh, I can't believe these are so cheap. And I bought like a pair of Batman babes for like 70 bucks for a Halloween costume. And then I realized they're fake and I wanted a real pair. So I went to the real store in New York City. But um, I I don't respect people who knowingly buy fakes. And I feel bad for people who do accidentally buy fakes. But I feel as though if you're going to be in your community, you have to educate yourself. And enough to not buy fake. Like, like you should know that like the site selling what the dunks for $100 are fake. Then if you try to pretend it's real, or you try to pretend that they're fake, I don't really respect that because I work very hard to get the shoes that are real and like to pay the money for that and whatnot. And if somebody else goes to Canal Street and buys my Louis Vuitton like Damier belt or like Preston's Hermes belt for forty bucks, and from a distance it looks the same, then they're getting as much value out of that as I am for when I paid six or seven hundred dollars for my belt. So I don't like people yeah. who buy fakes really. And I just, I just do not like the whole culture. I think right. it's terrible. All right, so let's break it down. Okay, there's going to be fakes in anything when there's supply and demand. You have that shortcut to make the money, you know, without all the backing. And that's not legit, and that's not cool. No, it is not. I do not support fakes, never have, never will, and I don't think anybody else should. But you know what? Fakes are going to be part of the game, and they have been and they will be a part of every game. Um uh, I don't think fakes are cool because, you know, if you're buying stuff that you really could not be affording usually, uh, you are trying to be someone you're really not. You're trying to be a fake. You're being a fake person by putting on something that is fake. And I take pride in having, you know, the real thing, you know, rather work hard for one thing that is real and feel good and confident about that. I, you know, my belt, my age belt, you know, I invest a lot of money in that and I'm glad it's real. I could have gotten one for 20 bucks. With an H on it, cool. But you know what? It feels good. It represents, represents my town, represents who I am. And uh, fakes are awful, but they're going to be around. Um, and you know what? The most annoying question I can probably get asked is, is this shoe website fake? And all of the shoes on there, no matter what they are, the Tiffany's, the what the dunks, eighty four ninety nine. Oh, wait. There's a sale, guys. If you buy two, you get them for 100 and they ship them to your doorstep straight from China. <laughs> oh, cool. Definitely real. They got me on that one for my first Nike yes, you purchase. Um, but, and they usually get most kids for their first one. But if it's repeated and secondary and if you have real stuff and you think that's real, you have minor issues. I, I, um, I, I completely agree, Preston. Um, the, like, just what you said, like you're being something that you're not. Like, I understand not everybody has the means to afford, you know, some of the things that, you know, we are lucky enough to have. But there's a way to be really stylish in, a, in an inexpensive way. Exactly. Or, like if you're going what – I, what I always say is like if it's better to get 
a real pair of shoes that isn't as limited or starting the game new. Like you can rep- real- realize that you can't get the Tiffany's, but maybe now a shoe comes out that's similar to them or that you like. Get that, and then you don't have to go to the store and buy a Givenchy t-shirt. You can go to Zara and get a cool t-shirt. You can dress stylishly and well. You might not be able to afford Billionaire Boys Club. Maybe you can afford Diamond. Maybe you can't even afford Diamond. Maybe you have to go to the sales section at Zoomies and get the Diamond t-shirt that nobody else, that, that they have left over. Like whatever you can do, you can be stylish in an expensive way. Pairing like high with low or just be a good outfit, but you don't have to make it expensive to be good. Exactly. So it's better to be who you are and live within your means than to try to pretend when and, you don't have something. And the problem is wait. people believe, like, don't, just real quick, real quick, people, like, don't believe us because, you know, they see us and we're always wearing, you know, expensive stuff. Like, well, you know, if we weren't, we'd still, like, try our hardest to be stylish, you know? We wouldn't just have, like, the exact same things. And people just don't understand that that people can have different perspectives and it's kind of sad, but part of the mentality. Can I ask you guys a hypothetical? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's take a kid who let's, okay. I'm going to use this example. Please don't hate on me in the comments. I'm sure it's going to happen, but you always always are like, you're so like gentle with the hating. (laughs) It's because I hate it. We'll get to that later. Um, But like I, the Air Yeezy, for instance, it's it's a silhouette that there's no colorway of that you can get for cheap or, you mm-hmm. know, anything close. A lot of people won't argue like the RT1s are close, whatever those shoes are called. But um, let's say you have a kid who really loves the design of that shoe. It's not that stylish. It's just he loves the design of that shoe. Now, he only has, whatever, 60 bucks in his pocket. Uh, would you tell him to just completely forget it? Or would you be okay if he bought a fake one knowing he couldn't afford the real one? Um, Me personally, I would tell him that he can admire that shoe and he can, let's say he's a 14-year-old kid, can't get a job. He can save up his money. Let's say his parents can't afford that. They never can. Do not buy the fake shoe because at the end of the day, buying fake shoes is probably going to cause you more of a headache than, um, than not. Like if you just, if you want to buy the shoe and admire it, Leave it at your house. I guess I can't Yo. have a problem with that. But what I would say is, like, then you're wearing it to school, and then the kid's probably going to get flamed for, for having to be fake if anyone knows anything. Like, you buy one of the colorways that didn't even release um, or whatever like that. Then let's say you get a real black and pink one or, or like, like, not real, but a fake one that's one of the colorways that came out. I think that then that cheapens mine. I mean, I paid I, $760 for mine, and I don't want some kid who I feel bad for that he can't afford that. But I don't want it to cheap in my purchase by him staying next to me in some situation, and then kids thinking, "Well, that's just sixty dollars shoes right there." You know well, what listen, I mean? listen, listen. This is this is how it breaks down. To, it breaks down in emotions. You know, what is his emotion right now in the present state? He really, really wants the easy. Why does he want the easy? Because he loves it. You know, he just loves the shoe and, and its whole, whole persona. Um, and what does he expect from the shoe? He expects to be fulfilled by it. And what would buying a fake shoe ultimately do? You know what? Temporarily, maybe it would satisfy his need for that shoe. But two years down the road, he's going to be like, wow, you know what? I was living in a lie. And it's going to be you know, felt by him sooner or later, really worth you know, that pain felt in the present to work hard for your goal. I don't know. You know, it's a, it, it is a goal. It is a physical goal. And you can work your way to it. You know what? You may have to hustle the, your, your, the hardest out of anybody ever, but you can still do it. It is possible. That's the greatest thing about, you know, today. You can do it. It may be harder than others, you know, but you can do it. Like my friend Kyle, for example, when he was younger, he wanted he loved dirt bikes. He had a paper route every day after school to afford a dirt bike. Then he sold that. He sold his dirt bikes. Then he bought a car with them. And like stuff like that. Like there's always there's almost always a way that if you work hard enough and wait long enough, like it might not take that kid who's 14 a year to get them. Let's say he really does love them as much as as you propose. It might take him two years and birthday and Christmas presents and doing yard work and taking out trash and mowing lawns around the neighborhood or whatever. But eventually you can get them. You buy them used, you buy them in not the best condition, but there's a way that you can attain almost any shoe, almost any. Now, I won't say any, obviously, but there's a way you can attain almost anything. I want a pair of Louboutins. I sell a ton of my collection. I can have them. I don't. I choose not to do that, so I would never buy a fake pair to satisfy my desire for them, even though I admire them and I look at them every day. Until I can find a way where I can afford them without sacrificing something, I'm not going to. So. 
That's 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 how I think about it. It's like me, like when I graduated, I knew that the Easy Twos were going to be coming out, so I saved the majority of my graduation money to help pay for them. Now I realize that I'm probably not going to be able to get them for retail, and the resale is probably going to be so astronomical that I'm probably going to may have to even wait past the release date till I have to get a used pair like a year later. And if that's what I have to do, that's what I have to do. But I understand that that's a fact of life and what my means can allow me to do. So I'm going to do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely understand your arguments, and I, I want to make clear that I have never owned a pair of fakes, never purchased a pair of, pair of fakes on accident or on purpose. Um, but, that you uh, know of. No, no, I, I know. <laughs> no, that you know, that you know of. No, because I have almost everything I bought early on was from a store, and the Yeezys and stuff, like, trust me, I know, but um, <laughs> the, uh, like, you, I just you don't know that feeling you come from a party, you go on eBay, you go to your recently watched items, and you're like, is that real? 100 bucks for the Louboutin, should I do it? Wait, never what? Had, you never had that? Oh, where I've been, where I'm pushing on eBay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, uh, sorry, I should clarify. I mean, I've never purchased a pair of fakes. I don't think I've purchased a pair of fakes regardless, but I've never been like, okay, I'm going to buy a pair of fakes. Because I'm worried that what it sounds like is me justifying my own purchase of a pair of fakes, at some point, which I'm not doing. No, I don't think at all. But. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's not my... Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, but what I am saying is, I guess for me... When I buy something, I buy it because I like it and I want to wear it, not because of how other people are going to react. So, like, to me, if somebody else wears a fake one, it doesn't change how I feel about the product that I bought. It might change how someone else feels about it, but I don't care what they feel about it. Like, I bought it for me. I didn't buy it, you know, because you know, other people will think I'm cool yeah. for having it. No, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. And a lot of people are just blind to the fact that you can buy things for yourself that other people like. Like, because I'm buying these things that rappers are talking about, I don't like them. I'm just buying them because the rappers are talking about them. No, what if I happen to like this thing before a rapper starts talking about it? And I'm automatically riding the wave that is hype. No, I mean, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I just, yeah. Like, and so one one other thing, uh, if uh, like, I, I want to make this clear. Like, I I don't think you you meant this exactly how it sounded, Preston. But when you said, uh, like, I don't think that buying fakes is is equivalent to like living a lie. <laughs> I, like, I don't I don't think that's really because. Again, I think there are two types of people who wear fakes, right? There are the, there are the people who are like, and I understand why people get annoyed by this. The people who buy like fake Jordans and then like act like they're you know the shit because they have them, and there's also the people who buy fakes because they can't afford the real ones and they're buying them for themselves. I personally think you know who no is one that does person? that. I've yes. never I've never <laughs> met anybody that just like sits at home and they're like I have all these fake shoes and I love them. Well, no, of course, that, but that's extreme. Yeah, but there's so, extremes of no, people that collect real shoes that do that. Yeah, but that, that's irrelevant, though. <laughs> I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. I just don't understand what it relates. Like, the, what I'm saying is people do buy fakes because they like them and because and not so they can go stun on people. I mean, like, I, I think that it is living a lie. I mean, you're trying, yeah, regardless yeah. or not, you're pretending to have something that is, is that somebody else paid the full price for. Right. Conscious of them being fake and you're wearing them as they are real, you know what? Yes, because those are intended to look like real things. They're, exactly. If you're wearing them, you're trying to wear those because they are looking like the other shoes. And if because, you're conscious of that fact, then yes, you're being fake. Because even if you don't intend, like, let's say you understand they're fake, and if someone asked you, you'd be like, yeah, man, these are fake, okay? That's like you're a person who just loves a shoe but can't afford it. Still, the majority of people who are walking past them and who have no interaction with them, maybe their friends know the shoes are fake or whatever. Like, I know kids like that. They'll be like, yeah, these Jordans are fake, whatever. They're like black, they're white cement fours. They, like, have, like, the Nike yeah. Air. They're, like, cheap as heck. But he bought them fake, and if you ask him, he's like, oh, of course these are fake. I bought them for 60 bucks. Now, he just didn't care to pay the full price, but now I'm walking down, I'm walking through to class. I see this kid with the Jordans, and I'm like, 
Oh, I didn't know that kid rocked good sneakers. Oh, now, like, I think something about him. I assume his shoes are real because I'm not touching the material. I'm not looking at them. So even if you have the intention of telling people that they're fake, the people who you don't interact with, who just see you wearing them, are going to probably assume they're real unless you're wearing, like, the gay fish Yeezys or something. Yeah, and the thing is, you can tell so much about a person by the sneakers they wear because, you know, it is a form of personal expression. And if that form of personal expression is is going into, you know, a brand that is trying to copy somebody else, then you know what? I don't know. I just feel wrong about that. Okay, well, I, I have an interesting argument about that then. Um, clearly, uh, the most popular bait design on a sneaker is extremely close to the Air Force One. Now, would you argue that that's the close to the best? That those people are also living this lie, or is it because that name got bigger that now that that's okay? So, like, if a fake company were huge, that'd be okay if they copied designs. Well, they're obviously putting it on stamp line, so that's what a lot of the people had the gripes with Babe about. Is that yes, I would if anyone asked me, Babe copied Air Force One, but Babe made themselves unique. They put the star on the side, and while I don't support copying that in that case. Was a f- so it's like if I said, okay, I like the like ratty shoes, right? Like rat eye or whatever. Like I'm not a fan of those. I think they kind of ripped off Supra and whatnot. Like I'm not a huge exactly. fan of those. But some people wear them and they think they're dope. Well, and that's a good option for some people. They may not be able to afford more expensive shoes, and these shoes imitate and look like the more expensive shoes. It's like me wearing a Zara blazer versus going to Dolce & Gabbana and doing it. You know, it's not trying to be it. It's inspired by, but is not the same. So if you, if a company wants to come out with the shoes that looks like the Yeezys, now, am I going to purchase that? No. But can I condemn a kid for buying them because he likes the silhouette of the Yeezys and this is as close as he can get? Absolutely not. But when they say have the Nike swoosh and they say Yeezy on them or they say Air Force One and they're not really them, that's never a problem with it. If you want to be inspired by that, that's fine. But then you're representing a different brand and everyone knows that. It's like the Fila versus Prada shoes. Like Wally says, your Prada say Fila, but my Prada say Prada. Like the Fila shoes clearly copy it, but then they have the Fila branding on it. Um, and so everyone knows that you appreciate the Prada design, you can't afford it, so you bought the next best thing. And that's, yeah. that's my opinion. Okay, I, I can definitely understand that. I, I still respectfully disagree, but I do mm-hmm. understand where you guys are coming from. Um, I, I think this would be a great time to move on to our second topic for today, which is haters. Not just haters on YouTube, because we want to keep this sort of relevant to everybody, but uh, before the show and in previous conversations, we've talked about how in this community, this senior community, everyone loves to tear down the next guy. Uh, it's not a particularly friendly community, um, and so we're just going to talk about our opinions on that, our experiences with hate. I personally am really interested to, to hear uh, One Veracity and PB talk about how they handle hate because I must admit they seem to do it much better than I can. All right. Well, yeah, I think I can speak, you know, on this topic for all three of us. And I've really been, really been thinking about this, you know, for the past three weeks. And, and at its core, you know, why it, why, it, why it happens and what it is stemmed from, and just through throughout this whole year, you know, accumulating a lot of experience and whatnot, I've kind of like come to understand uh, a lot better. Um, basically, everyone has something in common and what that is is everyone has issues uh those issues may be great and those issues may be small some issues may be you know i'm really stressed out because i have to study for this huge test today some issues may be i don't know what i'm going to be eating in the few in a few hours um but this thing that connects us all is this the sneaker um culture and you know it is founded on embracing terms and whatnot so why do we still you know, face all these issues of, you know, conflict and hate and whatnot in this world. Well, you know what? I just really think that the solution to all this is just understanding the roots of the sneaker game and going upon and moving forward in the future and understanding other people's perspectives. And people can't get over the fact, you know, that I'm a white boy and people think I have it served to me on a platter. And you know what? No. Yes, I work, you know, and people have this anti-racism almost towards me because I'm white and I feel that. And having felt that, I can further understand, you know, that. 
audiences. And, you know, the sneaker culture is so multicultural. It's awesome. It's an eclectic group of people. And I've never, ever judged anybody. But I don't understand that until recently. And uh, I feel a lot of people judge me based on you know my skin color and other people's skin colors uh, in negative and positive manners all the time. And it's unfortunate. Um, well, the way I think about hate is that there's, it's almost like there's two types of people who watch our videos and I've experienced, you know, a ton of hate and whatever, because, you know, I'm just like Preston, white kid, you know, clearly have a nice house, like with the closet and all that. And the way I think about it is, Hey, listen, I'm a college student. And before I was in high school, there's only so much that, you know, a college student or a high school kid can do to earn money. So clearly some of what we've gotten has been from presents from our family, money that our parents have given us. I mean, I did do work. Like when I bought the tip every day in the summer to like, at, from like doing yard work all around the neighborhood so I could earn the money to go to Dunkey Shames to buy them used and whatnot. But I mean, no one's, I'm not going to front and say that I paid for every one of my shoes. I paid for all my clothes. I mean, that'd physically be impossible for me. So what I think that a lot of people have to understand is, hey, let's say I was 35 years old and people asked me what I did and I had no answer for them. Then that might be a reason to hate. But when you're watching a video of a kid that's anywhere from 16 to like 22, you got to understand that some of that income, most likely, especially if they have a vast collection, a lot of expensive high-end shoes, is coming from like their parents or some other source they've had. Maybe they invested their money well. I mean, I invested money when I was younger and I saved all my birthday money and whatnot, and I put that in stocks that affords me some of the lifestyle I get to lead now. But when you're watching it, you have to understand that as a prerequisite. And if you're not okay with that fact right from the start, because maybe you do work, maybe you are older and you look and say like these kids are spoiled or whatever, then my videos aren't for you. Or you can accept that fact and appreciate the shoes, even if you don't maybe love how you know we acquired them or that like I didn't have that I'm not out of college that I don't have to work right now that I get to just like go to school and focus on that kind of thing or do an in unpaid internship or something like that over the summer like if you can appreciate that fact and understand that and appreciate my collection for what it is in terms of the sneaker the fashion the art of it all and not be like so worried about where I got it all from then I think you'll enjoy the videos more and then for the fans who just like accept it and like that's cool like I'm a kid myself like I wish I had that, but I'm just going to appreciate him for what he is. That's great. And on the Instagram world, I have experienced like almost no hate and it's been a joy. That's why I love dealing with my fans on there because the fans who really appreciate it and like to interact with me, yes. follow me on Instagram and talk to me there and they give me compliments or they ask me questions that aren't hating, that aren't annoying, that are not that like people's questions are annoying. I don't want to be negative at all, but just are like valid and it's great because I post a picture of a sneaker and say, how'd you get your money? They say, that's a dope shoe. Like, where'd you get it from? Or, or I can find that. Or like, I love your collection or like, check this out or something like that. It's all positive. And I wish that that's how the YouTube world was, but it's never going to be because it's a much wider audience and people can view the videos when they're just searching for the shoe instead of searching for you. So I would say, accept the people for who they are and think about realistically when you're asking a kid who's 17 years old, how he afforded the whole wall of shoes. Think about it rationally. I don't get it all handed to me, but I don't work for it all myself either. I'm lucky. My parents worked hard. My dad, I could go on for an hour about him, but he started with nothing and became successful. And I hope to do the same for my kids. So nobody, sh I shouldn't be punished or hated on for my parents' success. And uh, people should understand that it comes from different sources, saving, smart spending, as well as um, being um having my parents work hard as well. So that's about the same issue. I, I, I sort of don't want to, I, I totally see where you're coming from. Personally, I have always had the opinion that coming from privilege is nothing to be ashamed of. And it's not something that should be hidden. Uh, that being said, I feel like I get lumped into this, this group of um, people who, well, I'll put it this way. I haven't had uh, a pair of shoes in my collection that's been purchased by somebody else in a very long time. Like the now, granted, my collection is not as big as many other YouTubers, but that is that is my money. So I do, you know, let the record reflect that the shoes that you see me show in my videos were purchased 100% by me. 
Um, but that being said, I don't, I don't think any less of somebody else at all because they got uh, a pair of shoes or, you know, I only pay for all my clothes. They're super expensive clothes, but um, I just think it's really hard for me. And again, why I ask you guys how you deal with it because I understand hate. I understand why people hate. I understand that it makes people feel better. But to me, it's it's really hard when. I'm trying to put out two videos a day, answer all these questions, and it's like people are like, you know, Sue Sneaker, your videos suck, do this, 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 and I do ABC, and they still hate it. So it's like I, I realize that there are those people that you just simply will not please, but it's just it's infinitely frustrating to me that they keep returning my channel. Like it's like just leave. I don't I don't want to talk to you and like. People like have come at me before saying like it's a money thing. No, I make a ton. I mean, not a ton because YouTubers, at least at our level, I mean, you, you guys are bigger than me. But at least at my level, YouTubers don't make a ton of money. But um, I'll tell you that I, I make a good percentage of the money off of uh, um, off of the haters. And so it's not a money thing. It's it's a just like a man. I, I try to put a lot of work into my channel, and it really really frustrates me when people come in and hate. And I, I realize it's it's inevitable but you know yeah i mean the way i deal with it is that i mean it bothered me like the first two times but then like i was just like listen they are just jealous either of my shoes or me or they resent it for some reason and so pretty much the way i handle it is the way preston handles things when he just says i do it from for what i want to do i do the channel the way i'm going to and they can pretty much say whatever they want and i'm still going to do it the way that I have been doing it because I know that there's a lot of people out there who appreciate the way that I do it and like it. And I can see that on Instagram or when I interact with my followers who really appreciate it. So I'd rather completely ignore the haters because to me, they don't matter. The people that matter are the people who give me positive comments. And when you give me positive comments, then that's the people that I know I'm doing something right for. I know that I have a lot of subscribers on YouTube. So obviously people like to watch my videos. I know that I have a lot of followers on Instagram because people like to know about my life. So I'm going to keep doing what I'm going to do for the people who care who care enough to actually enjoy my videos and appreciate them. And I just completely disregard the haters because to me, they're faceless people away at a computer who are sad in their own lives, probably, and have to get that out by sitting behind a computer and hating on me. So if somebody comes up to me in person and is like, hey, fuck you, sorry, then <laughs> something, something negative, I'll try to keep the profanity out of it. And somebody says something negative to me like that, you know, that might be a little different because it's a face-to-face -face interaction. When it's on a computer, I'm just like, listen, these people have nothing better to do all day. Why are you watching my video? I don't get it. Do something else with your life. Just don't don't concern me. So I, I literally don't let it bother me at all. I mean, people could hate on me all they want on my Cali videos, but I mean like – or like my California videos or my Yeezy or whatever video you want. But to me, it doesn't matter because if I got 10 hating comments to one person, says, that's a great video. I loved it. I mean – I ignore the other 10 comments and all I did it was for the one comment and all the views because I know 90% of people watch a video. Whenever I enjoy a video, I rarely comment on it unless it's like Dory, Diggy Dory's Bennett's video and it's like the most amazing collection I've ever seen or something like that. I, I just don't even comment on it. I enjoy it. I take that in and then I move on to the next one. People are much more likely to have a negative comment than they are a positive one. So if I have a video and it has 6,000 views, 20 negative comments, 10, 20, 30 positive ones, those 20 negative comments may be the only 20 people who didn't enjoy the video, but the other 5,980 people, I'm sure, enjoyed the video fine. So that's how I think about it. Yeah, I guess I, I, I just still have a lot to, to learn when it comes to this YouTube thing. I Because I, I, I realize that stuff, but it, it isn't really mm – -hmm. uh, it doesn't really help me feel better about it. But, I, I mean, I think that's just part of, like, growing up, getting used to the channel and figuring it out on my own. But – uh I, I, uh, I, you go. Um, just, just your, the way you handle channels is a lot different, at least than my channel. Like you really interact with people. You put a video out every day. So you're really putting yourself out there and trying to interact with every person. Whereas me, my videos are always the same format. They're always, Hey, what's up? It's one for asked you review the shoe, say maybe a little personal stuff about what I'm doing or whatever. And that's the end of the video. So my videos are far, my videos are much more formulaic than yours. So for me, it's a lot easier to shug off the hate because I'm just like, listen, I'm one, I can't really change anything in my videos. 
And two, which is this is what's going to be. So for you, I can see why it's not harder for you to deal with it and like figure out a best way to because for me, it's just like it's like a TV show. You know, if somebody says a negative review about a TV show or something like that. But for you, it's almost it's not an attack, but it's more like it's a little bit more personal for you because mine, I'm like I'm a personality on YouTube, but it's also just like they're the same every time my videos and I make them that way and I do that totally on purpose. So it's like yours is a bit more personal than mine, I guess. I, I think that was incredibly accurate. And yeah, I mean, that makes perfect sense to me for sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely think we had a, a good discussion this episode. We talked about a lot of good stuff, but I, I do think it's time to wrap it up unless anybody has any last things they want to say. All right, I'll take that as a no. I think we are done with this episode of Soul Talk. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And uh, next week, hopefully we'll have Fran back. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Peace.